Hi. It's the Hog Palace. Welcome. It's good to see you all again. It's good to share again. We've been studying in the Old Testament about King David, about the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of God. Uh, we've been talking about uh, uh, some things about Samson. We've been uh, talking about um, basically how God chooses to rule and to establish um, not his kingdom, his ways and his methods here on the earth. Hoged thinks that God's kingdom is in the process of being set up. It's not something that people will know for sure. It's one of those things that to understand the handy, handy work of God, the way that God rules. I mean, God's not exactly losing to anything here on earth. God is having his way. This is God's world. It's not, it's not Satan's world. Satan thinks it's his, it's his world. That's one of his fantasies. And a lot of people are fooled into thinking that. These, uh, I, and it doesn't matter how much people complain about being you know, rough on preachers. They have it coming to them. They ask for it, and they're going to get it. Um, they want to talk big and bad like they know better, and they don't. And they're going to pay a terrible price for it, on top of just being shamed by their human fellow people. God's going to have uh, a hand in that as well. And that's how you deal with people. You turn them over to the people, and uh, you see whatever is, is, is left is left, whether it's a lot or a little. And that's how God has, has his hand in things. So to understand how God works isn't always an easy thing to do. We've talked about exercise, and we've talked about hoggy bird exercise. Um, Hoggett has mentioned the degree of education and efficiency that some of these um, uh, exercise equipment makers, you know, put into their product, and it's very good. Um, even if you don't use any equipment at all, it's all very good. So it, it comes down to what is most beneficial to the individual. Uh, the hoggy bird, for example. Um, seems extreme and the Bible even says we should be doing the things that are you know in moderation yet this seems to be extreme yet well although the exercise people on TV um, call what they do is extreme Hoggett believes that the hoggy bird here exercise is not extreme. It, it appears to be extreme, yet it's, it's actually something that is done in moderation. It's an extreme, yet it's done in moderation. It, it's an extreme in the eyes of those who haven't uh, been properly trained and toned in order to be able to do an exercise like this, you see. Now, the Bible has many doors and windows in it. And those doors and windows for our use are opened by God for us to be able to have access to His Word, to faith, and to be able to utilize the things of heaven through his word, God opens our eyes at any point of the Bible to be able to do anything. So, oh, by the way, if, if you notice a little haze here, Hoghead on this one occasion chose not to shave. Um, perhaps I'm going to, uh, 
If people believe the story of Samson exactly the way it was written, um, Samson only had to tell them that his power, the source of his power, was from God. Okay. Uh, I suppose we all have little, uh, little niches where we associate our strength, our power, our abilities with certain things. Maybe it's the use of a number two pencil when you're uh, growing up. You used it so long that you can't pass the test unless you have one, and now you, they even force you to have one. That might seem a little off. It's just the idea is the story of Samson. It bleeds into a uh, fantasy thinking a little bit, although it's real and it's true. All Hoggett is doing is using the fantasy portion of the story of Samson to make a point. And that is, well, according to the scriptures, when Samson's hair started to grow back, his strength came back. So there seems to be a direct connection there. Although Samson still didn't have to say it was his hair. He, he could have said it was God. Alright, so the point is if we believe that our performance is enhanced by certain traits that we have, then that has to be something that God seated us that way in order to think like that. So we, we have to believe that Samson had, uh, that he, he, he said something that ultimately came from God, that his strength came from his, his hair, and God held him to it, so that when his hair was cut, he lost his strength. Although, Hoggid believes that if he told them that his strength came from God, there would be no way for them to take his strength. Even if they cut his hair, his testimony w would be true. So, in, in, in handling some of those um, passages that have an a inspirational fantasy side to it, we must be careful that God is the reason that we can do what we can do. And God must get the glory. It's very important. Now, you know, Hog Ed has said that there, there are times that, you know, Hog Ed enters into exercise and through a certain technique, yet, if God wills it, Hog Ed can enter into this, in, into the Hoggy Bird. Hog Ed doesn't have to posture up. That's something that comes with time and and the reasons for that to occur as it does. Paul Gay could just simply stand here and drop all the way down and all, and actually stand on, on, on the ground and then start. Nineteen. Paul Gates going to stop at nineteen. That might seem extreme. You see, Paul Paul Gates wants to be able to express himself well here, so I don't want to get uh, uh, too 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 much uh, out of breath. <clears throat> that may seem like an extreme exercise. To be able to lower 260 pounds from, from, you know, all the way down to the floor and all the way back up 19 times. If I, if I just simply took it easy and 
made the exercises a little bit more speedy. Attaining 20 is no big deal. It's just something else to do. It is a blessing from God. And it is one of those things that borders into the fantasy side of the of God being so real. The realities of God are mixed in, in into what we do. And some of the things that happen with God have a bit of a, a, a fantasy side to it. The original creature that rose in the book of Ezekiel, cherubim, would rise whenever God's power was in the area. So, if God's presence pr produced a rise in a certain bird or a certain heavenly creature, then it most likely would have an equal effect on man. So in the story of the Ark of the Covenant, man was to carry the Ark. And it was believed, a lot of people be believe that men really were being carried by the Ark. That God's power was so great that it caused the ark to uplift and move. And the men, now it's, it may sound funny, it's not though. You know, let's be serious. Uh, Hoggett doesn't teach the, a Bible or anything about God in a joking way, you know, a way of being light and dismissing the faithfulness and the respect that. God most most very definitely de deserves. So some people believe that God's force actually would cause the ark to raise and that the the oxen and the men was just sort of a show uh, that we were we had something to hold on to the direction of God. And that is that is Bible fantasy. And the way God works, He's so powerful, and He can do such tremendous things. It's important that we be able to de divide up the truth from a fantasy that the Bible can so easily cause to occur and develop in us. There's more in the, in the Bible about men carrying their own weight, carrying their own cross. There's a lot more about that, about um, men having to uh, walk long periods of, of weight, uh, uh, very long in, in, enduring and even punishing experiences. Um, <clears throat> so we are hearkened by the voice of the Lord to carry our own cross. All right, and that doesn't mean that the Lord doesn't send someone or he himself doesn't help us up. Still, we didn't live by then. You know, I did I don't oh yeah, it doesn't need to. The Lord didn't carry. It was supposed to be the um, priests the Levites, they were, they were supposed to be the educated ones to know how to move the ark. That was considered, you know, part of the problem. And when King David, you know, he was a man of war. He didn't, he he didn't set out to do things according to the book, let's say, the or the, or the 
scriptural way because he didn't think of things like that. He, he, he thought in terms of we have a mission and let's accomplish that mission. Well, uh, Azusa, who put his hand out to stabilize the ark, wasn't necessarily wrong. It's just, you know, Azusa's purpose, his, his, his reason for God to be using him, his witness and the service to God was uh, his time had come, so God chose to take him at that time. Now, because of the way he, he was taken, though, it leaves reason and leaves rise for us to think, well, that seems strange. Well, that, it doesn't matter if it seems strange. God doesn't do what is appropriate. God is what is appropriate, okay? Whatever God does is, is done. Because God's doing it, and that's just the way God does it. So, it does leave rise to think, though, was there another way? Could there have been another way? And as it turns out, David, after he set the ark in this person's house for a matter of months, um, he looked into it and he realized that originally it was the priests who were, and, and, and in those days priests weren't in gowns, hiding away as a monk somewhere, eating a piece of bread and some water a couple times a day, saying their prayers, and, you know, feasting off the presence of the Lord. They had problems, and they had things that they had to work out daily. In that kind, in, in any atmosphere, that's true. What Hoggett is saying, though, in those days, the priests were actually very strong men. They were big, strong, and they were used to, it was their job to know how, and to be able to physically carry the Ark of the Covenant long distance. So, in accomplishing that task, there were super, supernatural things. Like when Hall Ged was up here, just I mean, look, we can even we can even do this backwards, so that the slant is wrong. So I'm slanting the wrong way, and the forces are wrong. Still, we can still do it, either way, and we can do as many as seems reasonable. Now, again, for the purpose of the lesson, we're going to use some moderation here, so all Ged can express himself without having to breathe uh, exhaustively here. So. The angle and the position, any way you want to do it, it can be done. If God wills it, ordains it, blesses that person to be able to do it like that. Why would God enable us physically to do tasks if all we have to do is trust in Him and we supernaturally go up and down without having to do anything? It doesn't. Things don't have to make sense necessarily. Not everything does with God, because God is um, so His abilities exceed our uh, ability to understand what He can do. Yet, on the other hand, it does need to make some sense. It needs to make you know rational sense. He made the physics. He made the earth. It's His cosmos. He He doesn't blend it out. And it's not on borrow, it's not on loan. And everything that we do in God's world, in God's cosmos, it has to happen through the route and the means and the education that God has developed. So, moving things physically is part of our ministry to be able to do a good work for God. So, why would God 
give us spiritual gifts if he was going to do it all? It's not like we're a puppet and God, you know, pulls a string and it kind of our mouth opens it and closes. Um, we have to do something on our own to enable the Holy Spirit to want to work through us. Um, we are not uh, ultimately we are not the soul winner. Okay, we may we may say some things that might help somebody. We may be the um, we may be the person that brings harvest and reaps the harvest that someone else planted. You see, but, uh, and ultimately, it's it's God wanting to work through us. Yet it's it's God's abilities that are at at work. You see, I mean. We can make this thing look kind of silly if we wanted to. You know, I don't, Hoggett doesn't think that's the responsible, you know, way of handling things. This is not just a piece of steel, yet some can say it is. It's a assembly that Hoggett uses to grow, become stronger, and to even become more faithful and to, uh, for Hog has faith to uh, um, uh, become enlarged as Hog grows with the exercise, and in doing so, the Lord enlightens Hog about things that he likes Hog to know and a better understanding, you see. But there's a lot more here than what meets the eye. The point of all this is. Ultimately, we have to give God the glory. I mean, man, God can choose anybody, and he can make him a winner, and he can make him a, a superstar. Ultimately, I, and Joe, uh, Joel Osteen, Osteen, the guy, yeah, he's in, I, I think his, his church is in Texas with his wife, who is the blonde, and they're supposed to be like the uh, it couple. And I'm sure they are good people. Um, and just like everybody else, they have their struggles. And and uh, one of the things that he said and on some occasion was that his, um, in, in his growing up, people didn't think that he would be very successful. He had either an attitude problem or there was just something about him, they didn't think he would make it. And it was very important to him that everybody knew that he did make it in spite of what they said. Just, you know, he needs to thank God for, for that and turn that over to the Lord. Uh, not, to, not to brag about what he thinks he did or he accomplished. So ultimately, it's the Lord. But let's, let's put it this way, let's hope it was the Lord and not um, the things of the world that have brought him success. And that's a concern. Because if a person doesn't acknowledge God in what they do, you know, the Bible says you're either for me or you're against me. And if he doesn't acknowledge that God is the reason for his success, or, or if, he, if he's calling what he has a success, I don't, Hoggett doesn't consider having lots of people a success. Okay, that's just how God made us. And to each their own liking, okay? Um, the success to all get is to have the Spirit, the Holy Spirit inside of us. That's success. And for what that brings to us in life, I mean, I've had, in Hallgett's growing up years, I've had God's guys say, well, how strong do you need to be? I mean, at what point? Do you need to stop exercising, or, or what is the goal? Because people just seem to exercise forever and ever and ever, and that's true. You need we need the Holy Spirit to help us to know where we should be, what what window of endurance and of, of exercise does God want us to be able to achieve and maintain? And some guys say, well, 
why is it even necessary to work out? Why aren't we, you know, good enough as we are? Well, a lot of people are, just as they are. But everybody needs exercise, just like the mind needs exercise. Suppose we exercise the mind and, and not the body. Well, we have, you know, smart people who physically cannot do a, a whole lot should there be a, a physical demand on them. Then you've got guys who big and strong, you know, you know uh, muscles bulging out, that may not be that studious, so they might be able to, you know, lift a car and do extraordinary physical things, and when it comes to the mental strain, they might need some help. They might need to seek uh, um, help from someone else. So it's that balance that we need to learn to achieve. And we humanly are not able to attain a balance on our own. We don't know how. Because we don't know how strong we should be, we don't know how smart we should be. Okay? There's only one thing that can help us achieve that balance, and that is the gift of the Holy Spirit. When we accept Christ, the Holy Spirit works within us and helps us to know where we should be along the lines of, well, let's call it um, refinement or purity. Okay, like when you, you take uh, oil to a refinery, you can get several different grades. And some of the grades are, are so refined, it can be used to actually, uh, if you heat it up in a science lab, you can actually use it to, um, um, it's so clean, it, you, you can actually uh, pull the molecules out of the air with it. If you heat it up and then chill it, the oil molecules fall down and, 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 and take and re actually remove air, air uh, atmosphere and molecules at the same time. That's how refined man can be. And that's what God is doing. God is refining us to be where we should be or how refined we should be. And each person to their own, their own um, category or um, compartmental uh, abilities. I can do the, the Holy Spirit ha has given us this ability and that one and that one. We can do all these things. And it's because of the Holy Spirit, not because of us. And all those compartmental abilities come together and form a, a bigger, uh, bigger um, compartment of, um, of skill and of um, spiritual gifting. So we have so much, so much to be thankful for. And uh, it's part of the problem. And, uh, um, there's not much Hog Ed can say about it. These preachers do not know how to teach stories with a lot of super, supernatural things where fantasy comes in, into play. It's, it's, a, it's a very uh, dangerous thing to teach because what man considers sin in the eyes of God may not even be sin. It's just man thinks along certain lines as being sin. If we lived, if we lived back in those days, um, laws were, were much different. God's laws were changing. You know, um, if you all may not recall when President Nixon was in in power when he was the president. He, he stopped the draft for the war in, in Vietnam. I have a phone call.
This is my father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings, and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my father's world, I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees, of skies and seas, his hands the wonders wrought. Oh, it, it makes you wonder. If this is God's world, then who has really decided what? President Nixon stopped the draft. And that caused a lot of confusion about the laws. And it's not that much different about the Bible. Because the way God works with his power sometimes is a very slim difference of understanding of what God's doing versus what man thinks God's doing. And we have to know him. And that's how we can continue to know him, to keep growing. His treasure. His treasure is, is in us, his Holy Spirit. And there is no such thing as I've met people who have said that they have reached the ends of the earth, so to speak, the end of the rainbow as far as learning and, and understanding. Hogan never commented, just has always wondered how that could happen. For a person to reach saturation that there is no more to learn or that they can't learn anymore is an indication that um, there's a problem because we should be able to. This is God's cosmos. It's not ours. There's always more. This is my Father's world and to my listening ears all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres to enjoy the splendor of the atmosphere, of the solar system, of the planets that God made, that God set in place. I mean, we are so far from understanding it all. All we can do is set out spaceships and, and telescopes and examine and test and, and sample. And that's just, that is, is literally barely scratching the surface and so many things that are are given names are, are of events that occur in space so m so many miles away man is looking for answers to these strange occurrences in our atmosphere in our world in this world and man is still doing what Adam and Eve are doing. Man still has that desire to walk through the cosmos and give things a name. This is my father's world. I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees, of skies and seas, his hand the wonders wrought. God's rules and regulations, they're all good. Whether they went through a change, or God revised them, upgraded them, or shall we say further developed them. God showed us, He showed us, He taught us through what He did how to develop things. When things don't work as well as they could, then further develop it. That's all part of God's cosmos and how he originally trained us and then retrained us and then retaught us. And we all walk through that. And some of us like to experience it in the order that God did that because we want to experience everything that God has. Knowing that in this day and age, there's only one way to live for God, and that's the way that it's presented in the New Testament. Yet, in God's ability 
for us to experience a spiritual reality and also coupled with a fantasy. He can take us back in time and we can live, we can live in that time for as much as is profitable to do, to learn things and to extract important, let's say, sediment of information that lies there that, that we can draw from. This is God's cosmos. We do not determine how far that is and, and when it ends and how much of it we're allowed to partake of. Entering into God's world is a fantasy in itself.